The first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy. And what that says is that the energy of an isolated system is conserved. And what that means is that within an isolated system, energy can change forms. It can change from one form to another. Maybe it changes from kinetic to gravitational potential energy. Perhaps it changes from heat to kinetic energy or something like that. But within an isolated system, the total amount of energy will be the same no matter what is being done with the energy. Now we can take that a step further and talk about what happens with the energy of a closed system. The change in energy of a closed system is going to be equal to the amount of heat that goes into the system and the amount of work that is performed on the system. Heat and work are the major forms of energy transfer between systems. Now, sometimes these problems can get a bit complicated because it's not clear exactly what work on versus work by a system really means. For example, if there was a block on a table and I pushed that block, I would be doing work on that block and it would be gaining kinetic energy or something like that. But as it slid to a complete stop, you wouldn't know whether the frictional force was really being done by the table on the system or what. And so sometimes it can be confusing trying to figure out what work on versus by a system means. So a better way of thinking about it is just figuring out intuitively, does it make sense that this would add energy to the system or does it seem like this would remove energy from the system? That's the best way to go about this. But the energy change in a closed system takes the form of heat energy and work. And so now we'll go through some explanations of some of the nuances of heat and work as they relate to thermodynamics. So as far as types of heat go, there are three types of heat transfer that have been described in which you'll have to be able to recognize when you're going through thermodynamics problems. The first one is conduction, and conduction is created by molecular collisions. Basically, remember that heat is often expressed in terms of a change in temperature or kinetic energy, and that energy can be exchanged when molecules collide with other molecules. So note that for conduction, you need to have actual contact between the two mediums in order for that kind of conductive heat transfer to occur. The two places that you'll see convection are with convection ovens, where the heat in the oven will rise and you can use that to cook food, or with wind patterns. Wind involves the movement of the warm air up and the cooler air down, and it creates this cycle. And those are two examples of convection because remember that gases are considered fluids when you're dealing with physics. So convection is essentially heat transfer based upon fluid movements between particles. And finally, the third type is radiation, and you'll only see this two places. Radiation is given off by the sun, and that's a very common one. And the other place you see radiation is with a very hot piece of metal. Both of those give off electromagnetic waves, and those waves carry energy, and so that is a form of heat transfer that you only see with the sun or with very hot pieces of metal. Those are the two places on the MCAT where you'll encounter radiation.